When I was a kid, I went to church and learned how God had made us all. Later I learned how he did it, and it was brilliant. His design is called DNA. A father's DNA combines with a mother's DNA to make a kind of blueprint. This DNA replicates itself and ensures that the tiny fetus grows into a perfect baby, just the way God intended. We call this intelligent design. The designer is a perfect being, which is why his design is so perfect. Someone once told me, if you want proof of God, just look at your hand. Well, okay, not that hand. Not that hand either. Uh, but when I was younger, I did take a look at hands and noticed that they're not all shining examples of the perfect work of God. This is an example of polydactyly, which is a genetic abnormality. It means the DNA copy has been badly executed. And it's not just the hands. The problem I later discovered is that when DNA replicates itself, it sometimes makes imperfect copies. These cause deformities and diseases. Sometimes they're apparent from birth, other times they manifest themselves later in life. Now, if God designed our replication system, there has to be an explanation. No, we're not talking about diseases like typhoid, HIV or hepatitis. These are diseases and abnormalities that result from God's own replication system, a system he designed. Which is a pretty strange thing for a loving God to want to do. Why? No, that doesn't make any sense. These genetic diseases and deformities strike Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists and atheists alike. Christian Filipinos don't get tested any more than Muslim Filipinos. Then why aren't all babies deformed? 10% of five-year-old children have some form of congenital abnormality, and that's a lot. But if babies are sinners, why don't we all get these abnormalities, and in equal measure? Some abnormalities are worse than others. But animals get exactly the same abnormalities too. They don't have original sin. Why are they being punished? Ah, uh, maybe they will. But that doesn't tell us why God has designed a replication system that's deliberately or even accidentally flawed. What's the point? It's very easy for us, living comfortable lives, to say it doesn't matter if these children suffer during their time on earth, but it matters to him, and to her, and them. But God is supposed to be immeasurably wise, perfect, and powerful. We can treat some of these diseases and fix a lot of the deformities. Spina bifida can be prevented with a simple dose of folic acid. If babies with cleft palates get surgery early on, they grow up perfectly healthy and happy. Why couldn't God just fix the problems right from the start? Ah, yes. When all else fails, blame Satan. But the devil would have to step in and physically change the chemical makeup of DNA, not just once, but millions of times, to create mutations that lead to genetic disorders. How? That's an incredible feat. And if God made a perfect system, how can something less powerful manage to change it? But here's the real killer to this idea. Different races get different genetic diseases. This leads us to the very puzzling story of the sickle cell. Sickle cell anemia is a genetic disorder found almost exclusively in Africa and South Asia. It wasn't confined to this area because Satan took a vacation there. The sickle cell is a genetic mutation to the hemoglobin gene, and it's there for a very good reason. It's effective against malaria. It's perfectly consistent with the idea of evolution, because people with the mutation had some advantage in combating malaria. Of course, it can cause anemia in some carriers, but the evolutionary benefits of combating malaria outweigh the evolutionary disadvantages of anemia. So the gene thrives and gets passed on. But if we go to the idea of intelligent design, the sickle cell makes no sense. For a start, why would God want to protect only some people in the world against malaria and not others? The natives of South America have no such protection. And why, if God is trying to protect Africans and people in South Asia with this gene, is the gene so defective that it has side effects? The fact is that the DNA replication system is far from perfect, and sadly every baby that's born isn't a little miracle. Some of these genetic defects are very old and affect the entire human population. Others are more recent and affect races that share a genetic history. The oldest of the lot affect both humans and animals. 
The DNA molecule is very large, which means its replication is often messy and flawed. Every time DNA makes a copy of itself, some parts get miscopied. Most of the time, the imperfect copy is barely more than a nuisance to the individual, a longer neck, a smaller nose, a bigger brain, or a hairier body. These traits may even be useful, so over time, more individuals will inherit them. But sometimes the bad copies produce gross abnormalities in animals as well as humans. There's one final twist in the tale. Recently, the Human Genome Project mapped our DNA and located every active part of it. But in between the active genes, the ones that get switched on and hopefully produce a perfect human copy, there are thousands of inactive genes. These are redundant, a throwback to traits that our ancestors had that we no longer require, like a hairy body or a tail or a large number of nipples. Every now and again, these genes get switched on, obviously by accident. This isn't intelligent design. There is, of course, overwhelming evidence that our genes are inherited, that mutations are hit and miss, and the successful ones get passed on. That's how animals evolve. If all this is design, then it's a bad design. If it's deliberately a roll of the dice, then it has devastating consequences for some unlucky children. It's anything but intelligent.